Comrade Dipankar Bhattacharya, General Secretary of the CPI ML Liberation. Comrade G.R. Shivashankaran, Secretary, Central Committee of India Forward Block. Comrade Manoj Bhattacharya, Member Central Secretariat of the National Committee of the Revolutionary Socialist Party. Comrade Asit Bhattacharya, Member of the Politburo of the SUCIC. Members of the CPI and Politburo on the dais, delegates, observers and guests. Dear comrades and friends, I thank all of you for accepting our invitation and joining us at this inaugural session of the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of India Marxist. I am pleased to see the presence of eminent public figures, veteran leaders of the people's movements, and leaders of different contingents of the people's struggles here. I wish to thank all the leaders of the left parties who are here, who accepted our invitation to participate in this inaugural session. Their presence here reflects the mutual desire of the left parties to work towards strengthening left unity, which is a vital imperative in meeting the challenges before the people and the secular democratic republican constitutional values of our country. Dear comrades and friends, we are meeting here in this historic city of Hyderabad. In fact, this podium is also designed on modeled after the Charminar. This has been the home for various dynasties, the last of them being the Asabja dynasty, whose hallmark was a ruthlessly oppressive rule. At one point of time, before India's independence, the Nizam of Hyderabad was declared as the richest person in the world. This accumulation of riches was directly proportional to the misery of inhuman exploitation over the people they ruled over. It was these conditions that led to the outburst of the historic Telangana struggle of the peasantry culminating in the glorious Telangana armed revolt. This struggle, along with the struggles of the peasantry elsewhere in the country, was the centerpiece of the people's revolt that set the agenda for the freedom struggle and the post-independent legislations like the abolition of Zamindari. The post-independent Indian ruling classes, the bourgeoisie being in alliance with the landlords, ensured that the legislation itself was limited, its implementation was halting and violated with impunity. The struggles hence continue. I am happy to note that some of those who participated in this historical armed struggle are still with us here in this inaugural session. Comrade Mullah Swarajam hoisted the flag and we salute all these comrades here and our red salute to all these fighters. In post-independent India, for my generation that grew up here in the city in 1950s and 60s, Hyderabad was a city that symbolized a syncretic culture and emerged as the cultural capital. Cultural, literary and intellectual stalwarts like Makdum Mohyuddin, Shaukat Azmi, Sri Sri Dasaradi Krishnacharya, who was imprisoned during the Telangana struggle, Arudra, C. Narayan Reddy, to name a few amongst others, enriched people's socio-political consciousness. Such a cultural synthesis, however, is coming under severe strain, not only in this city, but all over India in the present, under the present BJP central government. The comrades and friends, this 22nd Congress of the CPM is convening in a period when multifold challenges face both the people and our secular democratic republic. The current central government, whose reins are controlled by the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, is pursuing policies that have imposed unprecedented miseries on the people and, this, and at the same time grievously threaten the unity and integrity of our social fabric. The de dehumanization of our society is seen in the chilling incidents of rape in Katwa, now later in Surat, and now in UP in the recent period. 
It is shameful to see rape being used as a weapon for communal polarization. This must be res resisted and defeated. Amongst these various challenges, there are four that need to be confronted with urgency and reversed in the interest of people's livelihood and for safeguarding and strengthening the Indian Republic. The assault of neoliberal economic policies has assumed unprecedented dimensions. The sharpening of communal polarization is tearing asunder the unity of our social fabric as never before. The assaults on institutions of parliamentary democracy and constitutional authorities has unleashed an anti-democratic onslaught. And finally, India has been reduced to the status of a junior partner and a subordinate ally of US imperialism. India's independent foreign policy has been discarded and the US-Israel-India nexus is emerging in global affairs. This neoliberal offensive has resulted in sharpening economic inequalities. In 2017, year 2017 alone, 1% of the richest Indians cornered 73% of the additional wealth generated in our country. The impoverishment of the vast majority of our people is giving rise to a series of protests. The deepening agrarian distress is being resisted by our peasantry in a militant manner all across the country. The highlight of this, these struggles has been the recent long march of peasants from Nasik to Mumbai and we salute them for the conducting this struggle. The BJP central government is clearly betraying its own promise of assuring a minimum support price to farmers, which is one and a half times the production cost and a one-time loan waiver to halt the growing distress suicides due to unbearable debt burden. The promises to our youth of creating two crore jobs every year has been reneged. On the contrary, even the organized sector today, there is growing unemployment. The twin assaults of demonetization and GST have economically uprooted crores of our people dependent on cash economy and decimated the small-scale industry which provides the largest employment opportunities outside of agriculture. Today, you have seen the crisis in the cash economy with the no money in the ATMs and now another such onslaught is again mounting. There is no sector that has not opened up for foreign direct investment. There is no public sector that is not being privatized. People's assets are being placed at the altar of profit maximization for foreign capital and domestic capital. The working class during these last three years has risen through two All India industrial strike actions and a massive Mahaparav in protest against such assaults and the moves to undermine even the existing labor laws. Intellectuals and well-meaning people across the country have risen in protest against growing intolerance, against the cold-blooded murders of Dhabolkar, Pansare, Kalburgi and Gauri Lankesh. In the name of cow protection, Muslims and Dalits are being targeted for murderous assaults. In the name of moral policy, our youth are being told what to wear, what to eat, whom to befriend. And these private armies are assaulting those who do not follow their instructions. They seek to control our social order under the patronage of the RSS and the BJP. The situation in the state of Jammu and Kashmir has deteriorated to the extent that the degree of alienation of the people in the Kashmir Valley from the Indian state was never seen like this before. In the realm of intellectual thought, there is an unprecedented attack, on, attack of irrationality, over-rationality, distorting Indian history and seeking to reduce it only to Hindu mythology, disfiguring Indian philosophy to replace it by Hindu theology. These represent attacks on all progressive thought and have to be defeated. 
During the last three years, there have been new areas of people's struggles that have emerged. There is a stronger accession of protest and revolt from the socially oppressed communities, especially the SC, STs and the OBCs. New links have been forged for joint struggles between the left and such movements. In this context, I grieve the Telangana unit of the CPIM and the people for forging a broad front of struggles against social oppression in this context and the formation of the Bahujan left front in the state. Comrades and friends, it is precisely because it is the left that champions the interests of the people and sharpens such struggles that it is the principal target of the communal forces. It is the left alone that can give a policy alternative while at the same time strengthening the unity of our country's vast plurality and forging the bonds of struggle amongst the Indian people against this BJP government's policies. The left has been the target of reactionary forces and communal, communal combine in West Bengal. <coughs> Hundreds of our comrades have been martyred in the struggle against such attacks there. In the recently held elections to Tripura Assembly, the CPIM and the left have suffered a major setback. The RSS BJP entered into an unprincipled alliance with extremist tribal organizations and united all anti-left forces on a single platform to achieve this objective. They have unleashed a campaign of terror and violence attacking left activists. This shall not be allowed. This Congress will, after the proceeding, declare that this shall not be allowed and shall be defeated in Tripura. And we salute the heroic fighters of the left for resisting such attacks both in West Bengal and Tripura. In Kerala, the RSS BJP is targeting the LDF government and the left cadre with murderous assaults while mounting a nationwide disinformation campaign against the CPIM as the perpetrator of, this of these attacks of violence. The truth is the other way around. This is being resisted in Kerala and it shall be defeated by our party and Congress in Kerala with what they are seeking to do there. The challenges that we face in India, comrades and friends, are related also to the international developments. The prolonged crisis of global capitalism, apart from imposing unprecedented attacks on the working people in developing countries, is also intensifying the pressures on developing countries like ours to further open up our markets and resources for profit maximization of international finance capital. Instead of resisting such pressures, this current BJP government is willingly succumbing to them. This global capitalist crisis has led to a crisis of neoliberalism itself, in response to which there is a rightward political shift globally. This, of course, is being resisted in many countries, particularly in Latin America, developed capitalist countries in Europe and elsewhere. The presidency of Donald Trump representing the most reactionary ruling circles of the USA rightward shift. This political rightward shift is leading to more aggressive imperialist interventions across the globe, particularly in the progressive countries of Latin America. This offensive continues in the Middle East and the US-Israel nexus intensifies its efforts to destabilize the region and control its oil riches Israel continues with its illegal occupation of Palestinian lands and inhuman repression of the people. As we meet here today, heroic battles of resistance are taking place in the Gaza Strip. The CPM expresses its solidarity with the long Palestinian struggle for a homeland and with the people's struggle against imperialist interventions elsewhere in the Middle East. Our neighbor Nepal has witnessed a historic election that cemented the transition of this once Hindu kingdom of Nepal into a republic. The major victory by the joint front of the Communist Party of Nepal, UML, and the Communist Party of Nepal, Maoist, 
has established a stable government. It is heartening to note that both these communist parties have decided to announce their merger on the day our 22nd party concludes, that is the 22nd of April, which is also the birthday of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. On Lenin's birthday, they'll announce their merger. We congratulate our comrades in Nepal for this historic success. <laughs> comrades and friends, I am confident that this 22nd Congress of the CPM will give a new direction to a party for strengthening the independent activities of our party, for intensifying people's struggles and political intervention, for strengthening the unity of left forces and for strengthening the forging of the unity of left and democratic forces. In the final ana analysis, the answer to these challenges that we are facing today is the policy alternative that can only be provided by the left and the democratic forces. This 22nd Congress of the CPIM will provide the direction for mobilizing secular democratic forces to defeat this BJP government today. This is imperative to further strengthen people's struggles for the realization of an alternative policy direction for our country and for our people. So the Congress will surely work for the further, to further strengthen the CPIM, further consolidate left unity, oust this RSS BJP government, strengthen people's struggles for a policy alternative for forging the unity of left and democratic forces. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention.